Hello, everyone. Welcome to WedgeTech for the Environment. This is where our journey begins. Our team consists of Jericho Imperial, Turk Tran, and myself, Waya Mohammed. Our mentor is Eric Hugh. We're first going to talk about the introduction and problem to the project. We're going to talk about the initial and actual goals, the tech stack we used, and a demo of the features. And we're going to end with the limitations, the issues we faced, feature improvements, personal goals, and a thank you card. So to start with, many home buyers are making daily decisions without being fully aware of their potential home vegetation environmental impact. There's indeed a lack for quick analysis of how much their backyard is offsetting from their daily activities and environmental impact from driving, cooking, flying, water usage, dining, and so forth. There's a lack for a quick guide into data, such as the amount of water needed to maintain their prospective yards and potential water generation from these vegetation, among other environmental stats. That is why we are set to primarily help prospective home buyers and renters to visualize the environmental impact of their vegetation in order to make environmentally sound decisions and increase consumer confidence when buying or renting their dream home. So our mission statement is to inspire you to visualize and quantify your environmental impact one backyard at a time, one neighborhood at a time, one picture at a time. Our initial project goals was to create a web app that would be more like a social community for home buyers and renters for environmental impact awareness and mitigation. This is done through an image processing tool that will let users submit an image of their backyards then check their vegetation environmental impact status, share their results with others, and or compare it with the ideal situation or with similar places or homes to aid in the home buying decision process, recommending tools and advice on potential environmental mitigations. Our updated goals after reviewing our time constraints and re resources constraints, we use the minimal viable product strategy to come up with features in the time that we have for this internship. So on to Jericho for explaining of our tools and the features. Our initial tech stack, React, JavaScript, and TipTap was given to us by Code Our original task was to create a feature for TipTap, but the team with the approval of our own mentor wanted to create a website with a purpose. So we added some tech stacks under our belt. For our front end, we stayed with React and JavaScript because we realized that these were industry standard technologies for web development. These technologies worked well together, and we had a lot of onboarding experience with them already. To create a website with all these features, we needed a backend. All of us had previous experience with Python and Django thanks to CTI's pre-internship course, so we stayed with it to make it our backend. We also liked how Django came with a user-friendly GUI to test our backend changes. We needed a secure authentication system for our user base and features, so we got Joster. Joster was built to complement Django and gave us modern systems for authentication such as JSON web tokens, account verification through email, and password reset. It handles everything user-wise such as setting up and logging in. It was easy to implement and saved us a lot of time. Axios was used to help send requests from our front end to our back end. There were a lot of resources about our front end using Axios, so we used Axios since it was widely available to learn. React Redux helped us with front end by tracking authentication and debugging if it worked or not. We were able to see if signing up or logging in was successful. It made the authentication system in code organized by pairing Joser and Axios with Redux. We wanted to make our website look modern, so with a recommendation from our TAI Code Labs, we found Tracker UI. It saved us a lot of time and made the website aesthetically pleasing with no standing experience. For our image processing, we thought about machine learning and the usage of ImageJ, which uses Java. But then we realized our time constraint and available tech stacks such as Python. So we stayed with Pillow since it could be used by our backend and hard code our image processing without spending a lot of time getting introduced to machine learning and learning another tech stack. We used the Google Mapped API since it would help us with community and user features. There's no other alternative since Google API is widely used in the industry. For our social features such as making a post, we needed a way to let our users type. TipTap was our original tech stack, so we just stayed with it. Now that you know about these tech stacks that we use, here's an overview of our features that use these technologies. We'll go through authentication, which is the backbone for our social tools, calculations and its image submission, processing, and analysis, and community tool and its social features. All right, so let's start off with the authentication system and showcase signing up for the website. So over here on the top right, we can see the sign up button. So click that, import our information, now that I signed up, the website used Axios to send a request to our backend, which uses Joster and Django. And thanks to Joster, we are now sent a verification email to activate our account. So let's go to our email. Boom. 
All right, so now let's go click on the email, click on the link, and click the verify button. So now that I'm verified, let's go log in. All right, now you can see that we're logged in by this big red logout button. So let's go click that. And what, what if I forgot my password? So let's go demonstrate that right now. So let me click this reset password button and enter my email, hit click reset password. And then I should be getting another email from Joser. Here it is. And let's go click on this and reset my password. Now let's go log in with a new password. Now that we're logged in, we can access user only features on the website, which we'll showcase soon. Okay, on to the next feature, which is the calculation and image processing feature. So from the homepage, you can go to the second tab where it says calculate. Here you'll get an image upload tool. Here we used an image upload tool uh, using Django in the back end to upload image and store in a database. We also used Pillow to help us with the image processing and use Python for the image algorithm. Here you can upload your image using an uploader. You can give a title to your image and you can then choose and select your image. Here, selected this image in my backyard. I then click on Submit. You will see a progress bar that will stop once your analysis is done and ready. Here in the analysis page, you can see that we're running at some kind of algorithm that will generate these data. Uh, and the way we ran the algorithms that we have a pixel count algorithm that will determine using a hard-coded script what constitutes a tree. It's very tough to find what a tree is. So based on a rough estimation, we estimated how many green pixels there are in this image. Then we estimated that one tree is equivalent to 716,873 green pixels. So once we know that, we can now find how many trees there are in this image. And then we can generate this data. As you can see on the right here, next to the image on the left, that every data generated has an icon. This information icon will provide more information on how we got this data and what this data really is. So this is all rough estimation on environmental data provided for every picture. We also added a disclaimer that these values are only an estimate and not to be used scientifically. As you can see, we have a lot of limitations in uh, image analysis, uh, one of which is that a low pixel count or a higher pixel count can alter the results. This feature, along with how accurate the data, are part of our limitations, and we're going to explore that further in the next few slides. Now on to the next feature, on to community with Shook. Hi. So now we'll talk about the community part. So the vision, why do we need community features? So these features assure that we will be able to connect the users with others that have the same mindset or want to learn about environments, to be aware of the future neighborhood, or to promote environmental events. Also, we would love to create a safe zone for environmentalists to discuss, create events, alert to, and connect with one another. So now here we have our website. Let's click on the community button. And then here we'll see that we'll need to log in. So then now once we log in, you will see that here on the uh, top right corner, we have logout, which means that we are in. So now click on the community again. And then you'll see that we have three features right down here. The first one is create a blog, create a review, and then search for events in the area. So for the test stack, for these features, as usual that we're using the Django for backend, um, JavaScript, React, and Java UI for the front end. Particularly, we are using Google Maps API and TikTok framework for community features. So if you click on either create a blog or create a review, you will see there's text editor down here. So we're using TikTok for that. And TikTok is customizable and comes with a tons of like extensions. And it's also an open source, so it's giving us the full control of a lot of text editor experience. Also, it's React friendly and already has some code examples to implement with React. Also, it's headless and comes without any CSS. So then for the search for events in the area button here, if you click on it, you will see there is a map down here. And, and you see that we are using Google Maps API. And the reason why is because it's comments and user friendly so the new user will already have a sense of how to search. We will also talk more about these features in the future work, since the community features are still under construction. So now we're going to conclusion. We're talking about some limitations first. So we cannot identify trees. 
the current status is only able to identify green pixels, so low resolution images will yell low pixels count and will affect results and cause discrepancy. Second, our website is not deployed yet, and we have not created two paths for the blog and review pages to connect with the backend. We have not leveraged event search feature yet, and right now it can only show the Google Maps without a search bar. Last but not least, we have some issues with the Galaxy and security. So we have some questions like, is it okay to save the image or something with the copyright? Or if a user posts something, is this ours or there? And we have not pushed together a user policy and what to and what not to discuss. And now Jericho will talk about the future work. For some future improvements, we could use machine learning and data science for a more accurate image analysis of environmental data, such as real life measurements depending on how the picture is taken. We could also have a more secure backend instead of using environmental variables and hosting a website on our local machines, such as using password vaults to have a more secure backend and putting our website on the cloud so our web app email doesn't get scraped off and send scam emails in France. Right now, our community features are in development, but we would like to allow users to see top reviews, create posts, and view environmental issues with the help of Google API. In my opinion, our website looks great for our time constraint and having no prior knowledge with web development. But in the future, our website could look and feel a lot better. In the future for our Google Maps API, we would like the user to type in their home address and look for events and attractions in that area. We also need to fix a lot of bugs. For example, our authentication system. We would log in, but lose our authentication. It's annoying how we would need to log in again after we refresh the page. In the future, we could also implement our product with websites like Zillow to impact home purchasing. Talking about the future, let's move on and talk about our personal goals now that we have passed the finish line of this internship experience. For me, I've always wanted to make my own personal website. Now that I have the experience, I want to create a portfolio website and score a job or another internship with this knowledge I've gained. So my goals are to enhance teamwork experience and to repair foundation knowledge for full stack software engineering positions. As for me, I want to learn firsthand how to be a team player, how to boost my professional confidence, how to create a tech product from scratch, and how to use GitHub for other future open source projects. At the end, we want to send you a thank you card. We want to spe send special thanks to Codey and CTI for the opportunity and for believing in us and for making this possible. And special thanks goes to our mentor, Eric, for his time, guidance, and patience. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.